This is a very exciting lecture because we'll come face to face with the birth of complex numbers. In the last lecture, we actually derived this very famous formula for solving the, the depressed cubic. And so what we're going to do today is just consider a handful of examples. So if this is the formula that we're going to use today. Now remember that even in the derivation, we were looking for just one root. And I actually still don't know it. I'm looking forward to discovering whether when we eventually interpret the cubic root in the complex sense of representing multi-value function, three different values, whether we're actually, whether this formula will actually recover all three roots for us at once. But we don't need it, because as you recall, with a cubic, we only need one root, and then by factoring that root out, essentially, uh, we're left with a quadratic, and then we can solve it using the quadratic formula. So this doesn't have to deliver all the roots of the equation, just one. And so we'll start with the most boring example. I came up with a few, so here is one, so let's, let's just see what happens. So let's identify P and Q, and just see what we get. So in this case, P is minus 12, and Q is 16. So let's see what we get. I think we should still call this quantity the discriminant, for lack of a better term. So we'll have, so this will actually be 16, I believe, because it's, no, 64, what am I saying? This will be 64 because it's half of Q squared. That's another way to think about this term. So we're looking at 64 here. And you can think of this as p over 3 cubed. So four, negative 4 cubed minus 64. So that's why I'm starting with this example, because it's the most boring example, because the discriminant is 0. And so all we have is square root, not square, cubic root of minus 8, which is minus 2 interpreting the cubic root in the real sense, plus cubic root of minus 8, which is another minus 2. So we arrive, I didn't even write anything down, at minus 4. And what I would have liked to do first is to check that this actually fits, because you can kind of spot it simply by looking at plug in 4, you have minus 64 plus 48 plus 16, 0. So the formula worked. Okay, that's a quarter of the lecture. <laughs> Let's move on to the next equation, which will be a little bit more interesting, but just a little bit more interesting. It took me, to it took me a while to find this combination of numbers, but I, I did. And it's plus 9x plus 26. Equals 0. Now note that minus 2 is a root. Is it? Minus 8, minus 18, minus 26, plus 26 equals 0. So x equals minus 2 is a root. Let's see if we're able to get it out of Tartaglia's formula. So here, p is 9, and q is 26. So there'll be some work. So we'll have cubic root of q over, negative q over 2, so negative 13. I'm a little nervous about that. Negative 13 hopefully works out. Plus the square root. Trust your preparation. Let's see. It's going to be... Okay, keep your p's and q's straight. More important than ever. So q. So it's going to be q over 2, 13 squared. So 169, I guess I shouldn't have hesitated there because this number is always the square of this, see? So 169 plus 27. Okay, so plus the square root of 13, no, negative 13 minus 14. There you go. Cubic root. So here it was plus 14, and here it is minus 14. So here we have cubic root of 1, and this is cubic root of 
27. So we have 1 minus 3. Nice example. Equals minus 2. X equals minus 2, which we initially observed. So this is another example where the formula works without a hitch. Now they're, again, just planning for future enjoyment. This equation has two other roots. Maybe they're, comp maybe they're real, maybe they're complex. I haven't thought about it. Will this formula deliver them when we interpret the cubic root in the complex sense, which is coming up?